Welcome to Clean With Me Podcast. I'm Jessica. And I'm Ronnie. This is a podcast where we literally walk you through cleaning your house step by step. So let's clean together. Hey everybody, Jessica here. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about a new method. We're going to do a house clean per usual, but as I am walking you through cleaning, I'm going to talk to you guys about something that uh, me and my mom have been talking through. She talked about it in a bonus episode, the most recent one, but I want to introduce it to you. Um, So let's get right into it. First thing I want you guys to do, if you're an avid listener, then you already know, I want you guys to get in the right headspace to clean. So for me, that's getting ready for the day, taking a shower. Um, I have found over the years, you got to find what works, you know, grow, ebb and flow with your uh, day-to-day schedule. Things change, lives change, your uh, phase of life changes. Obviously, what worked for me when my babies were infants or when I didn't have children at all doesn't work for me now because now they're school-aged, we have school routines, I'm working now. So a lot of things have changed. We ebb and we flow and we figure stuff out based on where we are in life. So whatever works for you, whatever gets you motivated, for me, that, like I said, it's getting ready for the day um, in some capacity, doing my hair, throwing my hair in a bun, getting some comfy clothes on, and then I like to open all my windows and light a candle as kind of my cleaning ritual, and it kind of gets me in a cleaning mode and tricks my brain into smelling the smells and doing, If I, for me, if I do the same things every time before I clean, I my brain knows it's cleaning time and I'm in the right headspace and then I get more done. I'm more productive. So that's why I do the same things before every cleaning session. And, you know, it's changed over the years, like I said, different phases of life, different things, but um, that's kind of remained the same. That's always a way that I feel more productive as if I get ready. So whatever you do that makes you more productive in the morning, maybe that's going for a walk in the morning. Maybe you like to exercise or do yoga or who knows, whatever it is that makes you more productive. Maybe it's just a cup of coffee. Um, Do that. Uh, While you guys are getting prepped for the day, I also want you guys to start a load of laundry. If you're new here, me and my mom, Ronnie, Uh, We trade off doing episodes. I do one on uh, Wednesdays usually, but my daughter is really sick. She has a really, really bad stomach bug, and she's been sick on and off for two weeks now, but it was pretty bad the last couple of days, so I apologize for the delay, but um, I was in the hospital yesterday. She's fine. It was just a very bad stomach bug, and it was just a weird coincidence. She got two stomach bugs in a row. And uh, she's doing a lot better today, so I was able to do an episode today. She just, but that is um, also what I wanted to kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is the three different stages of cleaning, three levels of cleaning, and the first one I wanted to talk to you guys about was the tired and busy phase. And like I said, my mom did talk about this a little bit in her bonus episode, but I want to give my little spin on it and we're going to keep going with these phases, if you will, and we're going to talk about them and introduce them into our podcast. So the tired and busy phase is the first phase and just be loading your laundry as I talk. I want you guys to get those machines running. So move your clothes from the washer to the dryer and from the dryer to the laundry basket. And then at the end of the episode, it'll be just the right time for you to check your um, washing machine and do a laundry switch, if you will. Um, and then kick your feet up and fold that laundry. So just get the machines running for now while I'm talking. So tired and busy. Now, the tired and busy phase, that's going to be when some stuff's going on. So, my daughter throwing up all over the place, Um, you know, she's, it's coming out both ends, so we've got lots of cleanup going on. 
I'm not going to be doing my typical cleaning routines. Now, I'm, I could just throw, now, if everybody in the house was sick, if I was sick, she was sick, the whole family was sick, then I might do the bare, bare minimum, which would be, you know, get all of the, the soiled blankets and, um, towels and whatnot and put them in the garage and just, you know, do them at a later date. But I was, you know, everything and it was just her that was sick. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing a lot of cleaning, but I'm tired and I'm busy. I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm tired. I've been up all night. So I did bare minimum. What I did was I you know, I threw the clothes and the soiled stuff in the washer and I was just doing laundry and, um, basically just maintenance cleaning. Now the tired and busy is going to be when you've got, it may not be a kid sick. It could just be a lot going on. Maybe you worked a 12 hour shift. Maybe you were just completely just wiped out for the day. You've had a rough day, a rough time. Things are just not going your way today. You had so much going on. So you're in the tired and busy phase. You're going to do bare minimum. And what I want you guys to work on is even when you're in these, this phase where you are completely out of your mind, tired, whatever has happened, you know, maybe something really bad happened. Maybe you just have a lot going on in your life. Kids are sick, you know, animals are sick or something bad's happening, right? In order to not get super behind when you're in the tired and busy, I want you guys to work on at least one thing. What well, for me, it was just getting getting those soiled uh the soiled laundry and the washer and getting those cleaned. So that's all that I was focused on. Um, when my daughter is not feeling well, she is super, super attached to me. So she um, went to where I'm recording. So I apologize if you hear her at any point. She did not want to leave me alone. <laughs> so I have to get her, give her a break. She wants mommy be done with the laundry switch by now so just be working on unloading those clean dishes I want you to put all the dishes away into the cabinets um, from your dishwasher or your dish rack if you don't have a dishwasher or you have both go ahead and put the clean dishes away and then we're gonna work on doing a very thorough pre rinse of all of your dishes if you have a garbage disposal you know, put all that food down the garbage disposal um, and do a very thorough pre rinse get all the nasty stuff off your plates. If you have anything that you know is going to be challenging to clean, go ahead and put some um, hot soapy water in there and leave it to soak while you're doing the easy stuff. And we're going to get the these dishes knocked out. Um, another example of tired and busy. Say you like... Like I said, something is going on in your life where you are just so busy, tired, you just, you can't. Try to get one major thing done, whether that, maybe that's the dishes to you. Maybe your dishes are piling up and they're out of control and you're really busy and you, you're not going to do an hour long clean. You just can't, you can't do it. Um, try to get those dishes done. Maybe just you know, I'm really tired. I'm really busy. I've got so much going on in my life right now, but I'm just going to try to get this pile of dishes done. So if you're in phase one, if you are like me and you have a lot going on, maybe you've got a sick baby, maybe you've got, uh, you know, a new baby and you've been up all night, or maybe you've just had a really long day at work, a long day at home with the kids, whatever, and you just can't do a whole full clean of your house. Try getting the one thing out of the way that's really glaring and whether that be a pile of dishes or maybe for me it was laundry, you know, all the soiled laundry that needed to be done. That's what I was focusing on in the tired and busy. Now, um, keep working on your dishes while I talk. I want you guys just to chug along at your dishes and your kitchen. 
while I'm talking, but I want to introduce phase two to you. Now, two is where we're going to typically live in. This is our day-to-day -day normal phase that I typically live in. Uh, this is going to be the balanced phase. So this is finding your rhythm, your balance. This is your normal day-to-day. -day. Phase two is going to be your normal day-to-day. -day. You, um, you worked, but it's just, you know, you had a typical day. You're tired, but you still want to maintain. So phase two is more um, maintenance cleaning. So these are the days where you have a typical day-to-day -day where you're busy. Maybe you have a normal work day, a normal um, home day with the kids, and, you know, nothing crazy is going on. You don't have some crazy terrible thing going on in your life or you don't you're not super depressed or you don't haven't had a really hard day this is where we're going to live in typically this is a normal day-to-day -day balanced day I want you guys to just work on and just be working on your dishes while I'm talking um, start loading your dishwasher and getting that running or if you don't have a dishwasher just start washing you know your um easy stuff like your cups, your utensils, and then work to your plates and then your bigger stuff that you have soaking. Yeah, anyway, we're going to live in the in these balanced days. I want you guys to, fo your day-to-day, -day, your normal days, I want you guys to focus on maintenance cleaning. And what I mean by maintenance cleaning is uh, we're these are days where we're not going to have time for our bonus cleaning. So... Anything, if you're an avid listener, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about by bonus chores, I'm talking about like deep cleaning your fridge, uh, cleaning closets out, something that you have that's disorganized or needing attending to in your house, but um, you don't have time for on your day-to-day -day balance schedule. Uh, things that you're going to need to do on a day where you have where you're in phase three, which we're about to talk about, where you have that extra energy and the extra time. Now, now while I'm talking, if you don't have a whole lot of dishes, if uh, maybe you, I've been, I'll be honest, I've been eating off paper plates lately. Uh, somebody gave me some paper plates, so I've been eating off of those, but um, I don't have a lot of dishes right now personally, so if that's you, maybe you didn't have a lot of dishes in the sink, that's okay, just be working on uh, other things in your kitchen, throw away trash, clear surfaces, and start the wiping down process. If you have a crazy disaster, you have a lot of dishes going on, I want you guys to just keep chugging away on that, and before you know it, it's going to be over with, because with me, I work myself up about cleaning more and it takes a lot more time than it would to actually clean the thing I stress out and I think oh this is going to take forever to clean and then once I start doing it I just knock it right out and you know it just it's the starting part like I always say that's the difficult part so just start chugging away at those dishes and even if you have a terrible terrible disaster on your hands it'll be done before you know it I promise with the balanced stays stage two um, I want you guys to really try really hard that on these day-to-day -day normal days where you don't have anything crazy going on I want you guys to work really hard on maintaining and by maintaining it's doing your day-to-day -day chores like what I, um, today's episode is you know doing your normal loads of laundry nothing crazy but you know enough to keep yourself leveled and on track so your laundry doesn't pile up that's why I always start our cleaning sessions with a load of laundry because typic in a typical household if you don't do at least a load a day you start getting pretty behind or I like to do at least a load a day some people prefer to do laundry at the end of the week I don't have enough clothing for that or towels and also my kids are in uniform schools uh, so you know they only have a few uniforms I don't have a thousand uniforms so I have to do a laundry pretty regular regularly at my house 
so that's definitely part of my maintenance cleaning also just dishes for the day we want to work on cleaning dishes as we go and when I say we need to I obviously this is just a suggestion are these things that I always do no do I always do the right thing Definitely not. I don't always keep my house perfect. I don't always maintain perfect, even on balance days, even on phase two days where I don't have a sick kid or a lot of stuff going on. I'm not always maintaining, but it's something I'm working towards and I've gotten a lot better at it. And since I just moved into a new house, I've been super good on it because I'm still excited about the house. You guys know what I'm talking about when you first move into a place and you just get it unpacked and organized and everything. You're excited about it and you know, you actually have that, um, pride in your house. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bottle that feeling and I want to keep that feeling. And I want you guys to think about how it feels to be in a newly organized house like I am right now. And I'm trying to bottle up this feeling and I want to always have that pride in, in our house. So even on our, to keep our balance days balanced and keep that maintenance clean, I want you guys to bottle up that new house feeling that freshly organized your drawers feeling and try to maintain. So, uh, it, if you guys aren't done with your dishes, no worries. Just keep working on that. If you're in phase one right now and tired and busy, go ahead and do whatever it is that you are, you need to do just to get through the day. If you're um, doing your maintenance cleaning and you're in phase two, then let's go ahead and move on to, um, if you're still doing dishes, no worries, just work on whatever you need to work on, but I'm going to work on wiping down. So go wipe down crazy after you clear surfaces, throw away your trash, replace the liner of your trash in your kitchen, and then just wipe everything down. Um, if you have a microwave that's higher up, you need to wipe that down first. That way if any crumbs fall, you can wipe them up. Um, if there's a little dish in your microwave, that little glass part that needs to be washed, go ahead and wash that. Um, if your fridge is getting a little funky and needs a wipe down on the inside, you can quickly wipe it down. And if it does need a deep clean, then you can either do it at the end of the episode. We have episodes on that. If Or um, you can just scroll it down in a notebook and do it on a day when you're in phase three. So be working on your kitchen, just finishing up going wipe down crazy as I like to call it. If you like using disinfecting wipes, use that. If you like using just hot soapy rags, you can use that as well. And I just want you to wipe down any and every surface you see. And if you have too much clutter on a surface or a dining room table, I want you to clear it off, put the stuff away where it goes, don't shove things in drawers. And when I talk about bottling up that new house feeling, when I was unpacking and stuff, I put everything in its place, right? Because you don't want a new house. You're not going to put a bunch of junk in a drawer or something. So um, I have all my drawers nice and organized. So what I'm working on is maintaining that and keeping them organized. Is that always going to be the case? No, that's why we have bonus chores and stuff. But... I want you guys to work on maintaining so as you're putting stuff away, even if you're in a hurry, as you're running around grabbing stuff off the dining room table, I want you to be conscious of where you're putting things and try to put things away where they go instead of stuffing things because it's just making more work for ourselves, right? So that's something I'm working on and I'm going to try to carry this on long into my, living in my new house. Um, because I do not want to go back to a cluttery, um, three drunk drawers, <laughs> three drawers full of cords that I don't know what they go to kind of life. Uh, I don't want to stuff things. I want things to stay maintained because it, it was so nice that when I was in phase one, the tired and busy with my daughter being sick, I didn't have a crazy messy house because I had been doing well maintaining in my phase two 
So that's why it's important to try to maintain. So when bad things do happen, depression happens, you have a tired day, a lazy day, or you just have a really, really rough day for whatever reason. I know we have a lot of people that listen to this show, so you probably have so many different things going on. A lot of people, I know life is hard. We probably have a lot of crazy situations and hardships that you guys are going through that I probably can't even imagine. And for those times and those days where we're just having a rough time, we want to maintain on all the good days. That way when we're having bad days, all we have to do is, you know, the loads of laundry or whatever it is. The the basic um, minimum just to get through kind of things. Before I get into phase three, I want you guys to uh, make sure that you're wiping down chairs. Uh, you know, if you have high chairs or something that could be sticky, make sure you're getting all those, wiping down all the sticky stuff. If any crumbs have brushed on the floor, we're going to talk about cleaning all the floors at the end of the episode. But if you want to do just a spot sweep so you're not tracking it um, into the next room, then you can do that. And you know, just do a little, and then we're going to do a deep clean of the floors at the end of the episode because some of you have carpets, carpeting and stuff like that. And, uh, you probably don't want to listen to me while you're vacuuming. So we're going to move on to the living area. Now, if you're still working on the kitchen, no worries. You can rewind me, pause me, or just clean the kitchen. Um, continue to do it as I walk you through the rest of the episode, but whatever you want to do, keep doing it. I'm going to talk about phase three now. Now, phase three is the energetic phase. Phase, this is when you have that extra ball of energy, that extra time, or maybe you don't have extra time. Maybe you're just on a roll and you've clean. you've done your maintenance cleaning. You've done your minimum cleaning. You know, you did your laundry loads your dishes, you wipe down, everything looks good, but you still have extra energy, you still have extra time, and you're ready to tackle some bonus chores. That's what phase three is all about. So I want to talk about phase three for a little bit. As you're, I'm talking about it, be working on your living area. Just like any room, first thing I want you guys to do is throw away any trash and I want you to do the focal point of the room, which is probably going to be the couch and the dining room or dining room table, the living room table. If you have a coffee table or end tables, I just have a big ottoman in the middle of my room. Um, Sorry about that. My daughter was wanting a snack, honey. Let mommy record. Tell them you were sicky. I sick. You feel better today? Yeah. Okay. Now let mommy record. Okay, yay, yay. <laughs> Typically, if you're a first time listener, um, I wouldn't have my daughter in the background. I just, she's really sick and she really gets attached to me when she's sick. So I want to go ahead and let her stay with me. But typically I would be a lot more professional and I wouldn't have any background noise. But moving on, I want you guys to um, work on the focal points of the room. So that's probably going to be either your tables or your couches. And for couches, I like to have a hand vacuum or a little, um, if you don't have a hand vacuum, maybe a lint roller or something like that. However you choose to clean your couches, if you don't have a, you can use the attachment on your vacuum too, you know, the little hose to vacuum underneath your cushions or in between your cushions if your cushions don't come off. Um, I got a new couch, so I have, I have a cloth couch now, so I also, um, that's another reason I like to open the windows before a clean is so I can see if there's spots on my couch. Uh, I'm not allowing eating on my couch, but you know how that goes once you've had the couch for a while, you kind of quit caring. But again, I'm trying to bottle the new house rules and the new house feeling, and I want you guys to bottle that too. Think about what it's like when you move into a new place and you're taking pride in it. I'm trying to bottle that and keep it inside of me and um, 
not let that go and take pride in my house and my couch and everything. So I'm going to try to not let people eat on the couch. But anyway, uh, even so, the, sometimes crumbs, stains happen. They happen, right? No matter what. So go ahead and do a little quick vacuum of that. Freshen your pillows. Make your little pillows look nice. If uh, you have pillows where the cases come off, maybe you need to throw those in the wash um, if they're really dirty. If not, no worries. You can do that on a day where you're in phase three. And same thing with end tables or coffee tables. If there's clutter on those, a lot of people that have tables in their living areas will use those as hot spots. And by hot spots, it's a place that collects clutter. So, you know, for me, it's more my uh, kitchen countertops is where people tend to plop stuff down on it um, when we get home because I don't have a coffee table but I in a lot of homes people have coffee tables and that's where people plop down their uh keys or their you know uh belts or miscellaneous junk whatever you had in your pockets or the kids will do crafts and leave their stuff everywhere Anyway, it's a place that tables often accumulate junk. So whatever your hot spot is, if it's in your living area, let's go ahead and tackle that and just start putting things where they go. We don't want things on surfaces. We want things um, as clear as possible. That way we can wipe down things. So let's clear all surfaces, put things where they go, and... Um, I'll get, talk about a little bit more of phase three as you guys clean your living area. Make sure you're cleaning up the floor, putting things where they go, and just go uh, pick up crazy. And then all the surfaces that you've picked up and decluttered, I want you to wipe them down. So phase three, the energetic phase. These are fa the days, like I said, where you're going to have that energy to go the extra mile or... Maybe you didn't set forth to have a phase three day, but right now, say you're doing your day-to-day -day tasks, your every day, your phase two, and you have that extra momentum by the time I'm done with this episode, you're like, I feel like cleaning some more. I want a deep clean. I'm in a mood. I'm on a roll. I have energy today. I have an extra 20, 30 minutes, an hour. I want to tackle some of my big uh, extra bonus chores. So on those days, I want you guys to do a bonus chore. And it's good to have a list of bonus chores that need to be done specific to you. So whether that be getting caught up on laundry, uh, detailing your closet, getting rid of clothes... Um, there's lots of things that could be bonus chores of extra things that could be do done on energetic days and that could just be um, a very thorough mopping of your whole house. I have wood floors throughout my whole house so it is a big task to do a thorough mop. I will do a quick you know Swiffer of my house a lot of times. But when I'm on a phase three day I like to do a thorough mopping. I have one of those cool um, I splurged and got one of those uh, red mops with the just the heads, the head of the mops that you could throw in the wash, and they spin. Um, maybe maybe you know what I'm talking about. I'm bad at describing things, but anyway, um, I have one of those cool mops, so I do a very deep clean of the mops on days I'm feeling energetic, or um, like right now I don't have a lot of clutter in my house because I just moved, but um, deep cleaning for me right now would be laundry is always something that I need to do on a bonus chore day, day that I'm in a phase three. I'm feeling energetic. I want to do more things. I'm going to tackle a bunch of laundry. Um, deep cleaning bathrooms, that's a big one. If you're feeling energetic, maybe you need to deep clean some bathrooms. Really get down in there with some gloves and get the grout, get um, get the down to the nitty gritty, you know, deep clean those cabinets, organize those cabinets, organize those closets, whatever bonus chore specific to you that you need done. That's phase three.
So you should be done with your living areas. If not, no worries. Like I said, we all have different areas that need more attention, but I'm going to move on to a bathroom before I finish today, and I'm going to finish talking about phase three. So since we're talking a little bit about bathroom anyway, first thing I want you to do, if there's any laundry in your bathroom, I like to keep laundry baskets near my bathroom. In this new house, I don't have a place in my guest bathroom for a laundry basket, but I do have like this little laundry chute thing in my um, bedroom bathroom, which is awesome. But I like to keep one near the bathrooms. That way, uh, kids, teenagers, what have you, they don't have to go a long ways to throw things in a laundry basket. It's already there, so that helps keep things clean. A larger bathroom, I would highly recommend having a laundry basket near um, the bathroom or in the bathroom, but I'm t talking about day-to-day -day cleaning today. So if you're in a phase three day, when I'm done here, I want you guys to do whatever bonus chore you need to do, whatever, um, next level. And if you need some guidance on that, whatever area, you know, in your house that you need some extra things. If you're, if you're in an energetic mode and you have some extra time and you want to knock out some bonus chores, we have a plethora of different episodes to choose from. Whatever episode um, title that applies to your situation, whether that be decluttering closets or you need a, a major uh, disaster episode, you need to just focus on dishes after this episode. Or maybe you need to deep clean your refrigerator or you, even your car. We have episodes on your car. My car is always a mess and I have been focusing so much on my house and my new house and getting my house together that my car definitely needs some attention. So once I'm out of this sicky phase with the baby, I'm going to need to tackle this car on a phase three day because it definitely needs some attention. So that's something that's going to be a priority for me is going to be my car. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're thinking my car is a disaster, Jessica. I'm a, I'm with you. I have trouble keeping my car clean. Well, on those phase three days where we have some extra time. And um, I know we talk about the house a lot. But I don't talk about the car a lot because I'm bad about my car. But I need to talk about it more because maybe that will motivate me to clean. But uh, while you guys are working on your bathroom, while I'm talking, just be... You know, taking all of the stuff out of the bathroom so that you can do a sweep of the bathroom and a quick mop. Um, change out your trash if it needs to be changed out and put a new liner in. Get everything off the countertops and into its place, whether that be in an organized container under the sink or in a cabinet. Get that taken care of and put away and then once everything is off of the surfaces whether that be the floor or the countertops you want to clear surfaces even if things um, if you're going to spray a chemical obviously get toothbrushes and stuff out of the way in a cabinet put away I like to keep a lot of space on my countertops I don't like to keep stuff out um, I to me, things look a lot cleaner when they're hidden in cabinets, and that's something that I've made a goal of in my um, new house is, since we have a lot more storage space, I've gotten a lot of little containers given to me and bought at, uh, you know, Goodwill and stuff like that, little storage containers to put in cabinets so that I can keep things nice and organized and put out of sight and out of mind. So bathrooms same thing applies you know I have a little container that I keep all of my hair tools in my hot tools like my straightener and stuff like that my blow dryer and then I have a little container for extra toothbrushes extra toilet paper what have you extra stuff and then I have a container for um, each big kid you know in the kid bathroom I have a little container for my stepdaughter's stuff Brooklyn and Adia that way when they come back to the house they have a special area for their things and they don't get lost or put in the wrong place they know that their stuff's going to be there when they come back everything's put away um, start wiping down clean, clean your mirrors first with Windex or whatever you use 
wipe it down with a paper towel and then move down to your sink give that a thorough wipe down basically just go wipe down crazy i love using disinfecting wipes that are lemon scented the generic ones love those on the bathroom because you can throw them away and bathrooms are kind of nasty right so i like to use the throwaway disinfecting wipes that's just me if you prefer using rags that's fine um, I like to have separate rags for the bathroom, obviously, that I use for the kitchen. Um, that's just me. Some people, my husband doesn't think it matters. He thinks I'm weird for that, but I like to keep them separate. That's just me personally. However you choose to clean, um, just give a quick wipe down of your uh, countertops, your uh, side your cabinets you know maybe there's some toothpaste flowers on your cabinets and then make sure you get your toilet really thoroughly all the places that you touch first if you're using a rag um, and then move on to the dirtier places if you're using disinfecting wipes then you can just you know use a different one and throw it away and just give that a very thorough wipe down make sure you get that little back of the toilet area a lot of times you can unscrew it or snap it off to get a really thorough clean or and make sure you get the bottom part of your toilet you know the little dip on the side make sure you get that it collects dust and it gets kind of gross especially if you have little boys in the house you know what I'm talking about I do not have little boys but I have friends that do so they have to very thoroughly clean that area very often you're finishing up on your bathroom and doing all of the things um, I'm going to just finish up talking about phase three so whether you're having a phase one, two, or three day, whether you're having a day where you're tired or you're having a balanced day where you're doing your maintenance cleaning or you're having an awesome day where you can do some bonus chores, the most important thing is that you're not comparing yourself to other people, other households. Everybody has different priorities, different lives, different, even me, you know, do not compare yourself to me or my mom. We're here to help you guys, and if it sounds like we have our stuff together, I'm not speaking for my mom because she's a little bit more put together than me, but I do not have my life together. I am learning with you guys and growing with you guys, and when I'm sharing new things like this with you guys, um, these are helping me as well because I'm growing and learning and doing different phases and different things just the same as you guys. And I'm not the perfect housekeeper, but I'm trying to be better. And I've learned I'm not going to compare myself to somebody else because I do have friends that keep a cleaner house than me. And instead of comparing, I just try to take things from them and look at their organizing styles and maybe things that they do differently than me that I can implement in my house, but I don't compare. And I What's important, whether you're in phase one, two, or three, is that what phase you're in, you are just trying to better yourself and work on your cleaning style and just making life a little bit easier for yourself, a little bit better for yourself every day and working towards very manageable goals. Make sure when you're setting goals for yourself that it's something that's not super crazy, it's attainable, and just work on goals that are going to be, just make sure you're doing stuff that uh, just is better than the day before, and maybe think about how you managed a situation in the past, um, you know, last time you were in a phase one, you did such and such, and you didn't you didn't throw those clothes in the washer you were just you just threw them in the garage and you were like oh I can't do it right now I'm speaking of my own problems I just had Instead of doing that I just tried to do something a little bit different this time and instead of doing that I was like I'm gonna throw them somewhere I need to get rid of them somehow so I might as well just throw them in the washer instead of in the garage that way it makes one less job for me to do and I'll just fold them at a later time so just you know the goal here is just bettering yourself compare yourself to yourself and don't be too hard on 
the past. Don't be too hard on your future. Don't be hard on yourself right now. If you're having a bad day, if you're in phase one, that's fine. We all have those. Don't be hard on yourself. Just know that when you have that energy, use it. When you're in phase three, just use that energy. Run with it. Do those extra chores. Try to try to be as productive as possible when you're in phase two. And I promise you that you are going to see a difference in your house and a difference in the way you maintain your house if you just slowly make little changes for the better day by day by day and create new good habits and get rid of some of the old bad habits and just slowly maintain these things and um eventually you'll have that clean house and even when you're maintaining and doing a great job we all have bad days and dips and days that we don't do what we're supposed to do and that's okay we can always come back from it and that's what I want you guys to take from today's episode I hope you guys learned something I hope you got a lot done I apologize for the background chit chat in the background um from my daughter I promise you that is not the norm she just doesn't feel very well today um she is getting better though and that's what's most important and she wanted her mommy but um I hope you guys got something out of today's episode I hope you learned something and I hope that you will not be hard on yourself but better yourself don't forget to do your floors don't forget to do a very thorough deep clean of your floors when I am done talking, do a sweep and swiffer if you're having um, just a maintenance day. If you want to do a little bit more and do a thorough mopping or vacuum or even shampooing of your carpet, then awesome. Um, don't forget to change out your laundry. If you did everything that you needed to do today, then just take out your laundry, do a laundry switch and sit back. Put your feet up after you do your floors and fold those clothes that came out of the the dryer and I want you guys to have a great day and as always happy cleaning say happy